Hello and welcome to our first lecture in uh, jazz history. What is jazz? Now, uh, as we work on our five weeks here to uh, look at all the different eras in jazz history, uh, one thing that's going to be really important is to have a good foundation uh, when we're analyzing uh, different periods, different types of music, and talking about uh, different musicians. So this first lecture, we're going to just lay, ground, lay down the uh, groundwork and hopefully those non-musicians out there will give you a little bit more in-depth of things that are going on here. So let's get started. So first off, uh, in order to understand jazz, we need to understand some of the elements of jazz music. Um, some things that I want you to kind of think about as we're going through this lecture here is, number one, what is your impression of jazz now? Some of you may have a little bit of background uh, growing up playing a, uh, a band instrument through uh, junior high and high school and maybe playing in the jazz band in high school and some of you may have dropped out after that uh, junior high experience and thought it wasn't really for you, you know, that's fine too. Um, but, you know, what is your impression of jazz right now? Do you kind of understand what it's all about or is it really foreign to you? Um, also, uh, what music do you listen to right now? Um, is it just pop music, you know, like KDWB, or is it maybe classic rock, like KQ, or, you know, other types of music? Uh, what, what really, what type of music do you like right now? And also, why do you listen uh, to that type of music? Is it uh, to get you motivated? Um... Is because your friends are listening to it or you know why do you listen to that type of music um, does the talent or voice uh, from the artist matter to you you know um, is it the lyrics maybe they get you uh, is it the artist that gets you or is it just the genre music um, what do you listen uh, to that music for so in other words I had mentioned this before um, do you do you use it to motivate yourself uh, maybe to relax, uh, maybe it's driving music, or maybe it's just background music when you're doing homework. You know, what what do you listen to that music for? And if you've got a certain artist that you discovered, let's say, um, how do you get your other friends to listen to your music or your favorite artist? You know, do you tell them that this, this artist is unbelievable? You know, like uh, Eminem as a rapper, for example, that, you know, his lyrics are unbelievable and you know he takes his stories from his life experiences and I can kind of relate to that kind of thing so what do you do to influence your friends you know as far as what you listen to as far as music and then also um, a big one here what terms do you use to describe your music and maybe this is why you're trying to influence your friends to listen to it um, maybe for example the music is um, danceable, it's hot, um, it's laid back, it's harsh, you know, things like that. And as you can maybe kind of start to assume here, all the things that we've talked about in this first slide, we can also relate to jazz music too, you know, so why are we listening to a specific artist? Um, what things can you pick out from that specific artist? What terms can you use to describe that specific artist or, you know, genre of music? So keep that in mind as we go along here. So as I said, we're going to use that same process in understanding jazz music. Uh, first, what we're going to do is look at uh, music terminology to relates to the jazz idiom. And that is found in uh, chapter one. So this is kind of going a little bit deeper and pulling out some points that you should be reading. That's right, you should be reading in uh, your book in Chapter 1. Uh, we're also going to be covering Chapter 2 as well here. Um, we're going to cover two parts, uh, instruments and voice usage, and also music theory as it relates to uh, jazz. So first off, um, getting more into why we're trying to understand jazz here, is we want to use some empathy. So in other words, trying to understand where the musician or where the music is coming from. So basically, sometimes you get it, you know, you understand what's happening, you empathize with what's going on or sympathize with what's going on, 
And sometimes you don't. You just don't quite understand. And as we go along in this class, there's going to be some music that you just don't quite understand that will be kind of foreign to you. You just, you just don't get it, which is fine. Um, learning about the fundamentals and techniques in jazz can help deepen one's empathy. In other words, getting it. So, excuse me, if we have a background in the fundamentals and techniques so we understand what's going on, what the musicians are trying to do with their instrument, we can better understand and better get what they are trying to do and what that jazz music is all about. Um, another big important part of jazz music is use of individuality. Each artist or musician, as well as an instrument, has their own unique sound. Um, this is known as tone color or timber. So in other words, like timber, like, yeah, you get that. Uh, timber can be described as maybe a sharp sound or as an aesthetic. Um, so in other words, their sound sounds very somber or sad. So descriptive again, sharp, um muffled um what are some descriptors here um not round very dull okay aesthetic again brings up more of an emotional kind of thing their sound is very happy is very sad um jovial very wild okay uh, timber can also be a physically controlled um thing which we'll discuss later and it is used to develop one's individual voice, which is very important uh, for jazz musicians. As we start to look at the uh, history of jazz and look at different musicians, what they try to achieve with their instrument is to um, develop their own individual voice. Okay, They're not necessarily singing. There are jazz singers, but there are a lot of instrumentalists that we're going to be looking at, and you can't really use your voice when we think of when we think of one's voice they have to communicate through their instrument so we're going to be looking at how they do that physically okay also we'll be looking at the ensemble or group size um, it can vary in size or type and this will be discussed in a future lecture and it also depends upon the uh, genre and era of music that we're looking at too uh, instruments are classified into two main categories based on usage and production of sound. So as we look at instruments specifically here, we're going to look at two main categories. One of them is going to be wind instruments. That would include uh, brass and reeds, which we'll discuss in a second what we mean by brass and reed instruments. And then the uh, second main category is going to be rhythm instruments. And we'll talk specifically which those instruments will be. Uh, they're the ones that provide the harmony, and that will also include specifically the bass, as an instrument and percussion. So in other words, the drum set as an example. All right, we're going to start here with brass instruments. Uh, the most popular brass instruments would be the trumpet, uh, cornet, flugelhorn, and trombone. Okay, uh, trumpet and cornet are basically the same instrument. Uh, in early jazz, it did start out as a cornet. Um, due to its availability in uh, marching bands, and we'll get it. You'll get into this in uh, chapter three as far as the uh, beginning of uh, jazz music in New Orleans. But um, cornet and trumpet are very similar. Um, it's kind of hard to tell sound-wise in early recordings between the two. But most of what you're going to be listening to in this class would probably be being the trumpet, not necessarily the cornet. Uh, flugelhorn is a, uh, another type of trumpet as far as how it's used finger-wise and amateur-wise, but that would be used more in jazz that you would probably find in the 50s and 60s, especially the uh, West Coast or cool jazz, which we'll get into later in this uh, five-week uh, class period here. Uh, trombone uh, can either be a slide trombone or a valve trombone, if anyone's had any experience with that. And that might be something that you want to Google and check out, too, as far as pictures of these instruments, the trumpet, cornet, flugelhorn, and trombone. Um, also used, but less frequent, would be the tuba, the uh, French horn, and the baritone. Uh, tuba was used a little bit um, for outdoor, like Dixieland kind of uh, jazz settings to replace the uh, upright bass but more so you probably find the upright bass than the tuba when you're looking at uh, combos or large groups, especially large groups. 
Um, let's see here. Although played the same way, and I mentioned this already, the trumpet, cornet, and flugelhorn sound slightly different due to tube construction. Uh, basically what's happening here is the trumpet has a more of a brighter sound due to its shape, it has a cylindrical shape. The diameter does not change, it's like a cylinder, okay? And the other two have a conical shape, like a cone. And what that does is it kind of mellows out the sound a teeny bit. It's kind of hard to tell depending upon the player that you're listening to, okay? For this class, you just want to keep in mind that, yes, there's such a thing called the trumpet, cornet, flugelhorn, as far as the uh, valve instrument goes. Um, I had mentioned before, the uh, cornet was used till around 1926 when the trumpet took over. And uh, as I also said on earlier recordings, it may be hard to tell between the two. Uh, as far as uh, timber, uh, it can be influenced through embouchure technique, uh, the use of lips and mutes. Uh, as far as the embouchure uh, with the trumpet player, what they have to do is basically, and I'm actually a trumpet player, and as I'm teaching my beginning students, what I tell them to do is pretend you're saying M, and then when you're doing that, you're kind of going to buzz your lips like you're doing like a motorboat kind of sound, except for trumpets can be a lot faster. And with the lips, you can kind of maneuver your lips in such a way to kind of influence how the uh, tone of the trumpet sounds, whether it be kind of dull, excuse me, or, you know, sharper, or you can create um, a vibrato, wavering kind of technique, things like that. Um, also here, let's see, other techniques can be employed, um, which are instrument specific, um, and this can happen on the trumpet. Um, an example would be half valving, growls, smears or glisses, uh, multiphonics, things like that. What I would suggest um, after you're done with this lecture, if you want to make a note right here, is to, and I think you, you should be able to do this too, is if you go to uh, YouTube, and if I get some time here, I might post some YouTube clips or links, that you can check out um, the trumpet and uh, different players showing how to do different techniques like half valving, growls, uh, smears or glisses, uh, use of multiphonics, um, use of different mutes. There's a lot of different mutes that trumpet players use to kind of get their own individual sound. And you can visually see and also hear uh, what it sounds like um, through those YouTube clips. And I do suggest you do that to kind of get a better understanding of what's going on.